Hey, Melissa, we are so excited to have you on the Success with Soul podcast today. Uh, we're super excited. So why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your entrepreneurial journey to get us started? Great, Rachel. Thanks so much for having me here. I'm thrilled to, to be on the podcast. Um, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm Melissa. I am uh, a basically 40 something, um, you know, executive turned creative entrepreneur. Uh, I am working on building uh, my own passion led passion focused business. Um, it's a dream and a vision that I've had for a very long time. Uh, and, you know, in the last year, I've taken action um, to launch my business. And I am doing so while continuing to work full time. Um, I'm a mother of three. So it's uh, certainly a um, busy and fast paced journey right now. Uh, but it's uh, very exciting and looking forward to what this next chapter in my life holds with uh, with this business. I love that, Melissa. So tell us a little bit more about your business and what you do um, specifically. Yeah, my, my business is called Live Each Day. It is an inspirational lifestyle brand um, focused on exploring life well lived. Uh, so what does that mean? There's you know three segments to my business. One is a lifestyle blog um, featuring content, uh, creative content on food, motherhood, and also personal growth, mindset, um, and uh, self-discovery. Uh, the second segment to my big business is uh, courses and coaching, um, programs that are uh, designed to help women, you know, rediscover themselves. You know, uh, a lot of women um, hold a lot of roles in their lives. <laughs> they uh, are mothers, they're caregivers, they're wives, uh, they're, you know, they may be the primary earner in their household. They uh, are professionals. They have careers. They hold a lot of roles. And oftentimes, um, you know, over time in all those roles serving other people, they can tend to start to lose pieces of themselves. And so my programs are designed to help busy, motivated, uh, passionate women uh, rediscover themselves, you know, find what lights them up and help them uh, focus those passions on a way of life so they can you know, live each day in a meaningful way as opposed to kind of just surviving each day. And so my courses and programs and coaching are built around self-discovery and how to take those passions and turn them into an online business. Um, the third segment of my business that's coming uh, in 2023 is a lifestyle uh, brand and products that are uh, designed to explore life well lived as well. Um, apparel and home goods that will be featured in an online store. I love that, Melissa. And just hearing you talk about that and uh, reading your intro, it just it sounds like you've done that yourself. So can you talk a little bit about your own journey from corporate to pursuing this passion business and help, uh, coaching and mentoring other women? I'd love to hear a little bit more about your, your own journey. Yeah, and you're exactly right. That's, you know, how this all started. Um, you know, I have been in an executive professional career uh, as a leader um, in healthcare for over 20 years, about 22 years now. Uh, I've been a mother for 14 years. <laughs> My oldest uh, child is 14. And so, you know, I've been focused on serving other people. You know, I really view leadership as a career of service, a very servant oriented uh, leader. And so in those roles of serving other people as a mother, as an executive in, in healthcare, as a leader, um, you know, over time you can tend to just give so much of yourself away to other people that you can begin to lose pieces of yourself. Uh, you know, the other aspect of all of this is the, my day job or my, you know, professional job involves a lot of analytical thinking. It involves kind of a lot of what I call left-brained activity. <laughs> and, you know, over time, I have realized and discovered I have this whole creative side to myself, this sort of right brain side that was sort of fighting for its place in this world. <laughs> I, you know, I love to write. I love to paint. I love to create. Um, and I realized I'd sort of not really given much time and attention to all that aspect of myself. And, you know, when I talk to 
to busy, ambitious, motivated women who've had a career for a very long time, uh, if they're balancing that career with motherhood, other roles, other caregiving roles that they might hold, you know, they all say the same thing to me. I have a lot of conversations with women who uh, have this in, entire other aspect to themselves that they haven't explored. You know, an example is uh, someone that I work with currently. Uh, she's an attorney, highly professional woman, um, has a great career. And in conversations with her, I learned that she absolutely loves to bake and make cakes and cake decorating. She showed me pictures and I was just blown away. I was mind blown <laughs> at how amazing um, these works of art and creation were. And she just kept continued to say to me, I wish I had more time, more time and space. She's a mother to three. She has been an attorney for a very long time. And this is a story that I tend to hear over and over again. It's certainly my story. Um, and as I began to focus time and attention on my passions, on things that light me up, um, on the more creative side of myself, I discovered that I really wanted to help other women go through the same journey um, so that they can truly you know, live each day in a meaningful way. And that's you know sort of uh, how Live Each Day was born. I love that. I love the story behind the name, Melissa. And I see the pillow in the background. You must've had that like custom made <laughs> or something like that. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so tell us, Melissa, what led you to the incubator and like what factored into your decision to join the incubator? The incubator was such a wonderful, well-timed decision for me. Um, you know, because there are multiple segments to my, to my business, one is a blog, uh, the blog and the focus there is I love to write. I love to create, and I had followed Kate uh, for a long time uh, on her blog, Root and Rebel. And so I was on her email list. I would read her blog. I'm also focused on food and nutrition and healthy living. And so I was very drawn to her content, um, got to know her a little bit through that. Then um, at the very point in time, I was trying to decide on uh, potentially purchasing Digital Course Academy through Amy Porterfield. Um, Kate, I was also considering Kate's uh, programs, uh, Six Figure Blog Academy, Six FBA. So I was sort of researching both of those. And um, it was ex extremely well-timed because Kate was an affiliate for a Digital Course Academy. She was promoting uh, that. And she was also promoting uh, Six FBA within a new program that she was offering at that time called the Incubator. And so I joined her uh, virtual conference. She had a free all-day virtual conference with excellent speakers. Um, and I tend to sign up for a lot of those things. Um, I um, love ongoing learning, growth, and development, so I'm constantly seeking that. And I attended her virtual conference. It was excellent. And shortly thereafter, I, um, I purchased Digital Course Academy through Kate and uh, through her affiliate program, and then also signed up for the incubator and joined that coaching program. Amazing, amazing, Melissa. So uh, I sh I also share with you a love for learning. And so I, I just, that's so great that you, you know, you were in, in this world for a little while in Kate's community. And then it just also goes to show the power of like affiliate marketing and how you can use some other offers to draw people in. And then you became part of the Success with Soul incubator family, which is amazing. Um, so can you talk a little bit, Melissa, about the biggest risk you've taken since joining the incubator or the biggest challenge that you faced and overcame? Sure. You know, the, the biggest risk I would say is, you know, I tend actually to be a relatively private person. <laughs> um, and so putting myself out there and writing content that comes from my heart, uh, writing um, and, you know, really just putting things out there into the world that I might have kept more private in, in the past you know, is it felt like a risk to me. It felt like a risk to be online and to be more visible. Um, but again, that sort of falls in line with what I was describing earlier is I kind of feel that that was a piece to me that was extremely sort of bottled up and um, not expressed. And I feel like creative expression is just such a way to um, focus on self-discovery, your passions and um, so it was a risk to me to do that. It was a leap um, for sure. And it was uncomfortable at first. Um, the second part of your question was that about uh, the biggest challenge? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My biggest challenge, I would say, is time and patience. 
um, you know, growing anything that is sustainable and worthwhile and worth having uh, takes time. It takes time and energy and commitment um, and daily consistency. And, uh, you know, you have to be patient through that journey. It's not, it's not really about just the end. Um, it's about the process. It's about the growth. It's about the, you know, um, enjoying the process. And so sometimes I get a little impatient. I want to sort of be there. <laughs> um, and it is a process. Uh, so I would say that's a risk and certainly managing time. You know, I'm still juggling um, a lot. I'm in my full-time career. Um, still, I'm a mother to three very active kids who are involved in a lot of sports and activities. I also have a very long daily commute. Um, so time management and, and juggling and managing time uh, remains um, remains a challenge. Well, I want to come back to something that you've said because we we hear this a lot inside the incubator where it's it can be uncomfortable putting yourself out there. So I guess I'm curious, this is a little off script, Melissa, but uh, I'm a little curious, like you said it was difficult for you at the beginning. And how does it feel now? Just uh, so we can talk to our readers a little bit about that, about that journey of going from something that you hold so privately and maybe even a passion project to like actually putting it out into the world. Can you talk a little bit about how you feel then versus now? Yeah, I mean, I, I remember, and, and this is, you know, something that Kate helped me a lot with. Um, I remember initially, I had been working on the blog. I had been publishing, it was live. I was publishing content. I was focused on SEO. I was sort of growing it organically in, in a small way. But I hadn't really announced to anyone for I was doing that for about six months and I hadn't really announced to anyone in my private circles, family, friends, you know, colleagues in my um, uh, professional life. I hadn't really announced that I was even doing this. And it was such a mind block for me. I was kind of like, you know, um, talking to Kate and about about quote unquote launching the, the, the blog. And, and she would say to me, Melissa, well, is, is it is it live? And I said, it is, it, it is live. <laughs> she said, well, girl, you've launched. <laughs> and she got me over a mental hurdle of announcing kind of on my own social, um, social network, um, and, in my own social circles and on Facebook and otherwise, um, that I was doing this. And once I, it, and once I took that leap and just said to the world, I'm doing this, it just was a mental block that it, it only took a minute. <laughs> And after I did that, um, I sort of was able to move on. And Kate was a big uh, help in coaching me through that part of the process. I would say now it's very freeing. Um, I don't worry as much about what um, other people might think. I put it out there and it's been extremely well received so far. So um, now, as opposed to feeling uh, fearful and concerned about it, uh, I'm more so completely freed. Um, and so that's, that's, I would say it's quite, quite a transition in my own uh, mindset. I, I love that, Melissa, because <clears throat> oftentimes that is what happens is we get stuck with all the mind stuff up here. And it's not the problem that we have with like actually doing the task. Like you knew how to post, you knew how to write, you knew how to post blog posts, but it's like all of the mind stuff that gets in the way of that, which is what we work all the time with, um, with clients inside the incubator. So I, I love that story. And I love that you said that it's freeing now. It's not, it doesn't have to be something that you dread or something that you're afraid of. And just that consistent effort, putting yourself out there just goes to show like the journey from where you started to where you are now. So amazing. And congratulations to you, because I know that is a step that holds a lot of people back for a long time. Uh, and it's not always easy to like walk through that stage of discomfort. So amazing job. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit about some of your wins since joining the, the incubator. So like, what was like the immediate impact that joining the incubator had on your business? Yeah, the incubator was such a great decision for me. Um, again, Kate had a business model that was something that, you know, many components of which I wanted to emulate. She had, you know, had previously had a blog. So she knew all about um, writing and publishing and creating content. She, um, you know, had a coaching business. She, she knew about developing courses and coaching, coaching and programs that, um, you know, that were incredibly helpful to women. And so, you um, there were so many reasons why she was a great choice as a mentor and a great choice as a coach. Uh, in terms of, of wins, um, I had so many. I mean, she uh, she allows critiques every week, so you can turn your work in 
and your own individual personalized work, your writing, your blog posts, your email funnel, your email sequences, your funnel, your um, you know, your mission, vision, values, everything from the starting point of beginning a business through scaling it. Um, and so those critiques were incredible, incredibly helpful. Uh, wins that that I had were a lot of times there's so much to do, you don't know what sequence or order. And sometimes if they're, you know, people can get stuck, I can get stuck, you know, you're thinking of doing 100 things, and you really just need to pick one and move on. And she was really helpful in helping to sequence, um, you know, sort of what to do next. Um, I've had great blog growth. She had a huge component um, related to SEO. Um, I kind of love to sort of geek out on SEO, if you want my honest <laughs> um, thoughts about that. I, I love um, I love learning about how to uh, optimize for search. And so I learned a tremendous amount about that. Uh, I've had uh, blog growth. I'm preparing to launch my signature program. Um, you know, she really took me from having... Um, a lot of thoughts about my business to much more clarity, helping me take action steps to the point where I have a blog live. It's um, it's growing. Traffic is growing. Um, you know, I have a lot of first page, um, uh, you know, first page uh, you know, articles on Google. Um, and so I would say traffic growth. I would say clarity. I would say preparing to launch my program. Um, you know, just a tremendous amount of growth, a lot of removal of mindset blocks. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of wins that were um, directly attributable to her coaching. Amazing, Melissa. And this is a slightly like similar question, but a little bit different. I'm curious how your relationship with your business has changed since joining the incubator. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I would say I was more stressed about my business before joining the incubator and I'm much more calm about my business now, meaning I'm, I feel calm and centered and focused. Uh, I know what steps to take. Um, I understand the order of importance of things. I also understand it takes time. You know, I would say I was anxious um, and stressed uh, before. I, I sort of just wanted to be at this point in my journey and I wasn't there yet. And so I was always frustrated and anxious about that you know, through the incubator program, it just, you really understand everything's a journey. You're with this amazing community of women all going through um, very similar uh, phases in their, in their business journeys. And you're learning from them. You're seeing that everyone has the same struggles. <laughs> you're not, you know, no one um, is immune from, immune to that. And so I would say my relationship with my business is just calm and centered and focused. Um, and uh, I have much more ease, I would say, in growing in growing my business uh, after uh, being in the program. Yeah, some words that are coming up for me, like as you're as you're going through that is just it's it just and I can see it on I can see it on your on your face and like within your body language. It just seems like that flow and alignment and that ease is just what is like oozing out of you right now instead of like you said that anxiousness or that feeling of stress. So um, I think that that's so amazing in terms of like the journey from where you started to where you are now. Um, so that's a hard work. So congratulations to you on that front too, Melissa. Yeah, thank you. That that word is perfect. Alignment. Um, that I would I would say I feel aligned and at peace. So that, that's a great description. So before we move into the lightning round, the last kind of question here is just if you had to use one word to describe your experience inside the incubator, what would it be? Oh, one word. Huh. Tough to narrow down to one word, but I would say uh, supportive, maybe. Um, supportive, um, both from Kate herself, of course, as well as the incredible community of women that are in the incubator. Um, I remain uh, close with many uh, of those people um, that you, you create lifelong relationships um, and uh, the level of support is incredible. So I would say supportive. 
I, I like that a lot. And I like that you, you know, specified that it's not just the support from Kate and the rest of the team, but also the support from the community. Um, one thing that we talk about all the time inside the incubator is how valuable it is to have more than one brain working on your business. So it's not just like Kate's brain or my brain or the rest of Team KK. It's like all of the brains inside the incubator and this fabulous inclusive community that we've, that we've uh, manifested, I think just is so amazing. And so I love that you you know, use the word supportive to really describe the incubator. Are you ready for the lightning round, Melissa? Or you look like you had something else to say. Go ahead if you want. No, I just wanted to add uh, one thing. I um, you know that Kate has built quite a team, um, you know, over the last several months in the incubator. And I've been continued to listen to her podcast. I love listening to Success with Soul. And I've uh, heard all the interviews with uh, the team members. And it's amazing, uh, the team that she's grown. And I can see that the level of support uh, just continues to grow. So I think that's great. And congratulations to Team KK on that. Well, I'll pass that along for sure. Okay, so this is one of our favorite parts of the Success of Soul podcast. This is the lightning round. So don't overthink it, Melissa, just like the first thing that comes to mind. What is your favorite way to make time for self-care while running your own business? Flash for you, still working corporate, being the mom of three, what's your favorite way to make time for self-care? So important. Um, I would say couple things, uh, you know, I'm, I've always been very focused on healthy, nutritious eating, making sure I'm eating uh, f healthy foods that are sort of fueling my body, keep me going um, through the, the busyness of life. Um, I would also say, you know, what that's one of the great things about creating a passion focused business is uh, you can spend your times on like, time on doing things that you love. And so self-care to me is, you know, writing and painting and creating um, and doing some of the very things that I'm doing in my business. So it's, um, it's actually uh, oftentimes feels like self-care to work on, on my business because it's creative expression. Wow, that's beautiful. I love that. Okay, lightning round question number two, what is one tool or strategy that you use to help with time management? Yeah, time time management um, is always, um, always kind of one of the biggest challenges, but I, I would say you know, I, I do a lot of the things that a lot of people talk about, kind of the time blocking, Pomodoro method, things of that nature. But I would say the biggest um, uh, time management technique or strategy for me is something that I learned in my MBA program. Um, there was a book called The Power of Full Engagement, and it's really about um, managing energy, not time. And I would say that you know, I have this big focus on discretionary energy. I, I, I tend to be very intentional about what I give my energy to, um, both in terms of my thoughts, in terms of my mindset, um, trying to give my energy to uh, positive relationships, positive um, thinking, a positive mindset. And that really, when you harness the power of positive energy, it, it really helps you manage your time kind of in combination with, with other more practical strategies. Cool. Well, will you um, tell us the name of that book again? Uh, or uh, yeah, the book you read, and we'll link it in the show notes as well. Okay. Yes. The, the Power of Full Engagement. The Power of Full Engagement. Okay. Well, the next lightning round question is, what is the most powerful business mindset or entrepreneurial book that you've ever read? The one that you reference again and again, that's made the biggest difference in your life and business. Mm. Yes, there's many. I love to read. Um, if I had to choose one, um, I would say uh, I really love the book, uh, The Common Path to Uncommon Success by John Lee Dumas. Um, enjoy that book a lot. I reference it quite a bit. All right. We'll include that one in our show notes as well. You guys got a, a two for one with Melissa today on some book <laughs> recommendations. Okay, Melissa, what is, um, this is about mindset. What is your favorite quote or your mantra or affirmation that you use when things get tough and you feel like giving up? Yeah, I, I love affirmations and, and positive quotes. Uh, I would say, um, I, I would maybe offer two. Uh, one that are, are my own words and one that is from, is my favorite of all time uh, from uh, late American poet, Mary Oliver. Uh, and that is, what is it you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Um, love to, to repeat that in my mind often because it's a great reminder to live each day. Um, the other one that I, are my own words that I think about frequently is 
Um, when you're a goal-oriented kind of high achieving person, you can always be trying to kind of reach that next level, get to that next place, whether it's in your business, your personal life. And um, words that I like to repeat myself is, uh, you will get there until then, be here. Um, good reminder to be in the present moment. Yeah, I really like both of those, Melissa. So I might have to adopt some of your, your <laughs> affirmations and into my own personal ones. Um, okay, last lightning round question. What does success with soul mean to you? Yeah, I would say um, this is, I think, probably why I felt very aligned with the incubator program, because I would say that uh, success with soul really means living each day. Um, it really means, um, you know, working toward your goals and your dreams while being thankful and grateful for what you have in the present moment. And um, if I can continue to create a business that allows for that, then um, I would say that that's successful. as well. I love that, Melissa. So as we wrap up here, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the Success with Soul podcast today. I think our, re our listeners got so many good resources and um, insight into your business and insight into the incubator. Where can our listeners find out more about you, Melissa? Yeah, uh, it'd be great. Um, go ahead and check out liveeachday.com. That's my website. If you are interested in self-discovery programs or how to turn your passion into uh, an online business, you can find um, the learn button right at liveeachday.com or liveeachday.com forward slash learn. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning, Melissa. We really appreciate it. And I'm so glad we got to hear your story and your um, wonderful experience inside the incubator on the Success Whistle podcast. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me, Rachel. It's my pleasure. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.